Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Welcome, Chris Williams in the studio for Steve Arterburn today. Welcome to New Life Live. I have with me Dr. Alice Benton. Hello. Hi, everybody. It's a real treat to be in the studio with you two. It really is. And, and I have Dr. Jill Hubbard. Hi, guys. It's, and I it, agree, Alice. It's we're nice. rarely the, the, yes. the team that's we're, together. We're rarely the trio. So this yeah. will be fun today. This will be a lot hmm. of fun. Chris, I'm ex- you're flanked by the women. I am, which makes me feel <laughs> really, really good. You know, really good. So And, and folks, we're already singing this morning too so yeah i mean we're ready and we're in the goal that's right well to, to use a sort of a sports metaphor you know i used to think of mondays as sort of like you know the dreary money monday the manic monday mm-hmm. but i think of it that i get to do what i love every day now it's like kickoff monday Ooh, it's like wow. the beginning of the day yeah, the, the beginning week. of the week yeah so mm-hmm. it's i'm i'm excited the game has begun. We're kicking it off. We're kicking it off with you. A couple things I do want to mention is that this Friday in Columbus, Ohio, is our Intimacy and in Marriage Workshop. And so it's, again, if you're on the fence, get off of that fence. It's not, it's not comfortable. Sitting on a fence no. is not comfortable. And so if, you're, if you have any issue in your marriage, if you want to improve it, if you want to invest well in it, and I talk about this a lot, it's one of the best investments we can ever make with the best return on investment Mm -hmm. is our marriages. Obviously ourselves, our our life with God, our spirituality, but definitely our marriages. Right. Because when our marriage is in disarray, it throws everything else off in our lives, right? Because that's foundational Yeah, and that's foundational for your kids too. So the best thing you can do, the best investment, like you're saying, I mean, think about how much money we spend on so many different things, yeah. trying to fix up the outside of us. And this really does that internal work for the two people as a couple, right? And Jill, you mentioned our kids. I was thinking the same thing. Even yeah. if you're on the fence about your marriage, but you know you want to give a better life to your children, this weekend is such a great way to do that and to safeguard their future. Yeah. 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 One of the things that people learn here as well is that you're, you don't just learn how to deeply connect with your spouse, mm-hmm. but you can learn how to deeply connect with your children as well. Here. Right, right. And to, to save your children from, you know, the heartache that comes from divorce. And, I, you know, I've done the research, right? I'm divorced and I have had to raise two kids. They are not scar free. Mm, right so when you think oh well they'll be better off no they're not scar free so it's important yeah so again this friday intimacy and marriage workshop it is in columbus ohio give us a call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to register for that and if you want to call in we're live today and we're ready to take your calls. That is 1-800-229-3000. Um, and let's, with that, let's go right to the phones. Let's go to Elizabeth in Tacoma, Washington, listening on KGNW. Elizabeth, are you there? Yes, yes. Hi. Thanks Hi. My call. Yeah, no problem. We're going to come uh, up against a break here uh, very shortly. But I want to get you in. Let's get started on this. What can we help you out with? Okay. I have a 17-year-old daughter, soon to be 18, and she suffers from trauma. Uh, sexual assault um, happened over three years ago, and it's causing numerous struggles, and she gets mm. stuck. And yeah. She's not functioning well, and she has like an eighth-grade education, and maturity level is the same. Mm. Um, I suspect it's, I suspect it's, uh, her therapist confirmed that she has multiple layers of trauma yes. due to the assault and the bullying and other things. So we did the intervention. We got her to a therapeutic boarding school five weeks ago. Okay. But now I'm having, um, I wondered about her treatment plan and uh, diagnosis and um, how her to stay in treatment past her 18th birthday. Yeah. yeah. Adult. We'll, we'll stay on the line, Elizabeth, and we'll come okay. back to you. The The connection is a little bit off, so um, but but we'll come back to you. We'll get that fixed, and we'll be right back. I came into this thinking 
that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is coming to Columbus, Ohio, October 25th to the 27th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylan and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. To register to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. Here at this workshop, we had our first first ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Chris Williams in studio for Steve Arterburn today. We're talking with Elizabeth in Tacoma, Washington. And, and Elizabeth, you're saying that your daughter, who is 17, about to turn 18 years old, has experienced some pretty significant trauma in her life. And this has caused a lot of problems, a lot of issues. And she's now at a therapeutic boarding school. Is that correct? Yes. And, and what, how can we help you? What's your question for us today? Okay. Um, yeah, things got pretty desperate. She's trying to get her GED and, um, and her driver's license and a job. She just can't do anything. She's just really struggling and stuck. So we got her to the school, um, but I don't think they have a correct diagnosis for her, and our, my communication with them hasn't been very good. They say major depressive disorder and suicidal ideation okay but um they also said autism last week and i know sometimes trauma looks like autism yeah it can it gets really bad she gets kind of frozen and um Mm -hmm. anyway so i don't know how to communicate with them and advocate for my daughter what kind of treatment would you recommend for this kind of trauma uh, I was wondering about the EMDR. Would she need a good relationship with her therapist first before she would jump into something like that? Well, yeah, I'll start um, off. Is that, that yeah, a good, okay. strong, relation, trusting relationship with um, her therapist is really important. And, and again, this, from the picture that you've painted for us, the recovery does look long term and it may take quite a few uh, uh, treatment attempts for her to stick with it mm-hmm. and get with it. And so, but yeah, getting a correct diagnosis is important. But Jill, what do you think? Well, I, I think major depression is kind of a safe diagnosis. It's yes. kind of an overall umbrella diagnosis. And certainly those symptoms go along with someone who's experienced trauma. So maybe it's not the most specific diagnosis, but it is a working one to start. And certainly, you know, we'd be looking at post-traumatic stress Um disorder here with her. Um, and I think she needs to be someplace where they work with people who are victims of trauma, where they have yeah. that, um, you know, in their curriculum. Um, but treatment is something that, you know, it's not perfect. There is no perfect treatment. And in the middle of it, it can feel like, wow, is this really helping? And that's where, like Chris is saying, it, it, over the long haul, you may have to do several variations and mm-hmm. adding in supports as needed. I think the EMDR would be paramount for her to yeah, move forward. And I think what's important with that, too, is that EMDR also needs to be supported. It has yes. to be appropriate to where a person is at. Yes. And so there's a lot of assessment that, mm-hmm. that clinicians put into those decisions. Mm-hmm. And Elizabeth, we hear your concerns yeah. that you're not well connected with the school or getting the kind of communication that you need and want. And I, I encourage you to persevere on that. Because of your daughter's age, you probably will need her consent or assent as well that you communicate with the school. But keep at it. Be persistent. 
And and even though you have concerns, I do wonder if your daughter is feeling safe there and if she's sensing progress and a good relationship with the therapist because the the patient's experience of their therapist and the therapy mm-hmm. session is one of the most important components for whether or not it will work, no matter what the treatment modality is. So if it's EMDR, if it's cognitive behavioral therapy, it's really the relationship that has more of the healing power than the kind of treatment that's being being used, but EMDR is one of the mm-hmm. most effective and fastest for trauma. Right, but it's in okay. conjunction yeah, her, with all those things you mentioned, yes. Alice. Yeah, well, her therapist doesn't do the EMDR, so she would need to switch therapists, but she's only been with this therapist no. for five weeks. Okay, not necessarily. A lot of times, Someone okay. will be in therapy and then do EMDR as an adjunctive therapy. Yeah. So where that therapist will okay. work with her therapist. And, and if your daughter okay. has okay. that strong relationship with her therapist, even if they're not doing EMDR, if she mm-hmm. has a strong relationship, I, I wouldn't move away from that too quickly if I were you. Oh, yeah. They don't have one yet because it's just been five weeks. She has yeah. one with the therapist here. Okay. She saw an outpatient. But oh. then at the school, she, you know, they're not close yet. And, and is she able be. to continue perhaps some phone sessions with her therapist at home? That could be really helpful in bridging good. the gap. So you might check into that. Okay. I would be asking the the, f- the boarding school, what is their protocol for, you know, parental contact and involvement? Because, Elizabeth, if you're only getting your information from your daughter, you're going to hear all mm-hmm. kinds of things. Yeah. Really and yeah. and kids really pull on their parents at a certain point when they've been there just a short time to pull them out. That's mm-hmm. so typical of treatment. And so you really want to make sure you're not just listening to her, but getting the full picture of what's mm-hmm. going on and what the long-term goal is, right? Just, exactly. I need that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We parents. Long term goals. And yeah. we parents get pulled into fear and the time oh, yeah. pressure of how quickly yeah. is she going to get better, especially with something as frightening as suicidal yeah. thoughts mm-hmm. and a history of sexual assault. Yeah. Please continue talking about your fear with your own safe people too, so that you can get comfort um, and, and not pressure pressure mm-hmm. this whole system too quickly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, what about turning 18? Well, well, again, when that's what I worry about. So well, right now, right now, what I want you to focus on now, she will have consent. But in most most cases, even a seventeen year old can have their own consent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. the the concern is that you know, what's going to happen in the future? What? How is she going to respond or not respond? Is she going to check herself out? Elizabeth, there's a lot of things here that are not in your control. Yeah. And there's a lot mm-hmm. of things to worry about, especially with your daughter. What I want you to try to do is stay in the moment, stay in the day. Okay. If okay. your daughter is feeling a lot of support and safety in her environment, she's going to stay there. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, trust that so far. You know, trust that as you go forward. And and like what was said, keep checking in with the school. Build a good relationship with them where you're getting reports back and you're, mm-hmm. um, but also. But she may have to hit against their authority absolutely, first. Absolutely, and that's right? going to happen. Push back on mm-hmm. that before she kind of surrenders into the treatment. Well, and people who have been traumatized are going mm-hmm. to challenge the trust. Right, Over absolutely. and over and over She's again. Not mm-hmm. trust. And so they're going, and so, and they're going okay. to challenge you as well. You know, your daughter's going to challenge you and see if you're going to rescue her and right now, I want you to avoid that. You can right. support her, but you don't have okay. to rescue her. And, and Elizabeth, don't be afraid of her turning 18. Where is she going to go? Okay. What means does she have? You're telling me your child doesn't even drive. You're she doesn't right. have a job. Okay? Yeah, I know Kids, throw that right. up in your face. Yeah. You know, I have an 18-year-old, a senior in high school, and I basically tell him nothing changes. It's just that you get bigger consequences mm-hmm. now by the outside world, right, that don't fall on me. But as long as I'm supporting you, you know, Things That's life good. is still the That's same, good. and I am driving him to school still. So yeah. what is he going to do? Yeah. <laughs> well, Elizabeth, thank you. Like yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for calling. We're gonna we're gonna send a copy of Steve Arterburn and Becky Johnson's book, Understanding and Loving a Person with Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Oh and so I think that's going to okay. help help you support you in, in this process and as you go forward. And the last thing I'll say is, Elizabeth, it's really important that you take care of yourself and that you find you your support. own support mm-hmm. through this process as well. So, again, thank you so much for calling in. 
Um, let's keep the phone lines open and going. Let's go to Rose in Anaheim, California. Rose, are you there? Yes, I am. How are you doing today, and how can we help you? Thank you for taking my call. Okay, I don't know how to handle my daughter's shocking sexual writing. Mm. It, it, do you find it in a journal or online or both? What's What are you seeing? On her journal. On her journal. On her journal. And it, so, uh, how, how, how old is your daughter? She's uh, in seventh grade. She just turned 13. Oh, okay. Rose, does um, she know I, yet that you found the content? Yes. Um, this is like a month, like three weeks or a month ago. Um, I was very disturbed, of course, and I thought something had happened to her because she used the I, you know, um, like he did this to me or mm. I was excited or, you know. Um, and um, so I, I was very disturbed. Um, but I, I confronted her and... She did not want to tell me anything. Her offer was throw it away and done be, be done with it. Um, so because we had been going at it for a while at night, that's what happened. Uh, we put it in the trash can. Of course, I went digging for it the, the next day. Uh, but she's in, in um, seventh grade now, a different school. Uh, so I talked to her sixth, sixth grade teacher uh, from last year, and I told her what had happened and that I needed help. And she gave me a very important piece. She said that one of her friends last year had brought into the classroom inappropriate reading material. Mm. So nothing has happened to her. It's just, you know, she's in, in the experimental phase where she wants to act like she's older than she is. Mm -hmm. Well, she's, so, she's growing up and her likely her body and hormones are changing. Um, and kids at that age, kind of um, mature at different rates and some girls some kids become very kind of hyper um, sexual in their curiosity even if they're not involved in anything and unfortunately younger and younger the kids are exposed to more and more mm -hmm. seventh grade can be a really <laughs> pivotal challenging year um, for for kids kind of sorting out who they are they're still in that awkward junior high phase but they're wanting to be older like you said um, I'm wondering, Rose, what is her relationship with her dad like? Oh, his that's dad? the other piece. Yeah, um, yeah they, um, we got separated when she was three years old. Okay. Um, Does she have any contact with him? Been, like, not really. He remarried. He, um, the girl that he got married to has two girls almost mm. the same age as my daughter's, uh, but he's very disconnected. Mm. Okay. So no, no, no contact. Um, just this weekend, um, he had asked to see them. And because we've been going at it, I said, you know, we, we have a life. We can't just drop everything and see you. So why not? Because he had asked last weekend and I said, not this weekend, but what about the following weekend? So we had scheduled that for this weekend. Unfortunately, he's never um, on time. And um, so... We had left the house because my daughter needed to be. Well, um, Rose, Rose, let me jump. Drawn. Rose, let me jump in because we don't have a whole lot of time to go down other yeah. stories. But y your daughter yeah. has this, you know, she's has this. I'm guessing sexually explicit things in her journal. This is a big concern, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, what do you do about it? Well, I tried talking to her, but she won't talk to me. I try reaching out to the teacher. Yeah, well, let's, uh, no, no, let's, let's, let's hold on. Let's, let's talk about that. Alice, how do you think she connects with her daughter? Rose, you're already taking some very good proactive steps. So I praise you for that. And we want to encourage you to keep going down that road. I wonder if the boy was named in the journal. And if I, I, I think it's not. okay. I think it would be very wise to start getting to know the other kids that your sister spend that, that your daughter, mm -hmm. excuse me, spends time with. Mm -hmm. Even having them over to your home, 
talking with them, talking with the other parents too, because it, it is serious. I wouldn't just let my daughter go at no mama, I won't talk about it. Right. I might even insist, eh, we're, I'm, I'm worried enough about you and I love you so much. We're gonna take a walk around the block every night, the two of us, and I, I am gonna, I'm gonna be persistent about this mm-hmm. because I care for you that much. You can't force her to talk, but you can continue to pursue her heart in this and explain why you're so concerned. This might be a good a good time to share a little bit about your story, even perhaps about her father and, and some of what happened there as a, as a way to let her know you have struggled in your life as well, but you've learned from it and you want to share some of your knowledge and your experience with her. But most importantly, you want to continue to offer her a listening ear, even if she rejects it. Don't give up on that. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. That's what we are. Yeah, absolutely. I hear the music now, so maybe a couple more points after the break. Yeah, so, and and Rose, uh, we're going to go to the break here really soon, but I I just want to encourage you, choose connection over control. Yes. So so we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about that. Jill's going to give you some pointers on that, but... It's really important. These things are really scary when our children are exposed to this incredibly dangerous world where there's a lot of harm being done as, as we experience. And we want to control, and that's natural, but what really is effective is connection. And we'll talk more about that when we come back after the break. I feel blessed to have had this opportunity for my needs to be met, connecting with other women who are fighting the same fight, hoping for healthy marriages, and growing closer to the Lord on their journey. My name is Shelly Martinkus, and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography, it might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. I feel encouraged and hopeful that even in my struggle, I am enough. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. Through the sharing in our small group, I realize that I am not alone. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Washington, D.C., November 15th to the 17th. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. And we're back, Chris Williams, in the studio with Dr. Jill Hubbard and Dr. Alice Benton, and we're talking with Rose. And uh, and Jill, you had a few things well, well, to... Well, just a few more things, Rose, to add in. Um, and we were talking a little bit about the break. You, Rose, cannot do this alone. It's hard to be a single parent, as I'm sure you're well aware of. And so it's really important that you draw in resources that can help you. You know, is your daughter in a youth group? Are there mentors there, you know, both women and men? She needs some attention, some healthy attention from men. Um, Because this is the age where she's trying to figure out how, if she's desirable to the opposite sex. And so, and that's where I know having the dad that's inconsistent and unreliable and in and out of her life, um, you know, I know that's really chaotic, but even a bad dad is 
her dad and is necessary. And so I would try to make some contact happen as best you can so that she can have some connection with him, especially since he has these other girls. It can feel really like somehow she wasn't chosen. And so, you know, until she says, no, I don't want to see dad anymore, I, I think that would be something to um, allow to happen. And then get That's healthy. where she's at. Okay, where is she at? angry with that okay yeah. um, makes so sense for her birthday yes for her birthday he asked to do something and she said i don't want to see him mm. okay yeah okay okay well well that is understandable he has has really hurt her so um i think too for you rose to accept where your daughter is at it can be really hard with our own reactions of you know, not my little girl, um, not wanting them to be more advanced than they are. So really look at yourself and where you are at in being able to say, okay, this is where she's at, and so I need to meet her there. And we need to have those conversations about healthy sexuality and what's appropriate and what's not appropriate and what she thinks, yeah. what she imagines, and you have to be that safe place along with what else you create. Yes, yes, that. That's, that's something that I really do because I didn't appreciate my mother not talking to me and my Good. sister. So yeah. I over talk sometimes. <laughs> it's okay. I, I do. I do. I do talk with her and she's open sometimes about, okay. you know, other things. And she does tell me that in her little group of friends, there's a, only one guy and that she tends to hang out with him a lot mm -hmm. um, to the point that recently they have uh, switched lockers. Uh, it's just fun, fun for them. Um, but and a lot of the girls in the school are, you know, pointing at them saying, oh, you guys are going out. And, well, of well, course, she... Rose, she, Rose, let me, she yeah, actually, Rose, let me jump in again um, because uh, you're doing a great job. I really want to highlight this. She's having these conversations, and sometimes it takes a long time to warm up and, and even putting our toes in the shallow end of hard conversations. Mm -hmm. And so you said, hey, I do a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to also do a lot of listening. Again, what Jill was saying, be a safe place for her to be able to talk through this. And you want to play what I call the long game. You know, the short incidences tend to create these crises mm -hmm. that we paint a really bad future with. Just know that, that mm -hmm. you're going to be journeying with her as her mom, walking her through some really fun and exciting things and walking her through some really tough and challenging things, especially as it relates to her sexuality. We're going to send you a copy of Jill's book, um, Secrets Women Keep. I think this could be a great conversation piece mm -hmm. for you and your daughter to talk about, hey, th these things that, that are going on inside of us, to be able to find the safe places to talk about them outside of us so they don't own us and that's really important in her process and 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 like what was said you know find those other resources youth group um, pastors uh, wives of pastors different things that she can safely connect to people that help her guide along uh, her journey of healthy sexuality and so Rose, thank you yes. so, yeah so thank you so much for calling in we're so grateful that you are the mom that you are and you're concerned as an invested well in your daughter's life so so keep going and what we're here to cheer you on so thanks for calling thank in thank you so much no problem have a great day i want to go to deborah in dallas texas listening on kwrd deborah how are you doing today Hey, just great. How are you? Good. How can we help you? Okay, I've been dating for two years. I'm 63. I'm ready for a commitment. Uh, my boyfriend is not. And I, I made the comment that, well, you may not be a good fit for me since I'm ready and you're not. And he said, no, he, he doesn't want to break up. But he can't tell me how much time he needs. And his former wife, he said they lived together for five years. And she gave him an ultimatum. And that's when he proposed to her. I I don't know. Am I, should I just, I don't know if I want to keep waiting. Well, I don't, well De mm -hmm. Deborah, he, he, you actually do know, right? <laughs> he, he waited what? five years. Now he's waiting two years, yeah. and now he needs a threat to commit 
So we, we're going to explore, like, what kind of guy is this? <laughs> you know? Like well, that need- that, that's what I started asking myself. What am I not seeing here? What am I not paying attention to? That's good. Hey, those mm-hmm. are some actual what? really good questions. Yeah, what am I not seeing Why here? Why does he need a threat? I, that's a great, that another <laughs> great question. Mm-hmm. So yeah, what does he self-initiate in his life? Yeah, mm, does he do everything under threat, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it, does it take threat to create action, mm-hmm. which speaks to deeper problems? Mm-hmm. We're gonna go to a break, but this is a good call, Deborah. We're gonna help you out. We're gonna help seeing see what's going on and head you in the right direction. We'll be right back. my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. (laughs) Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Hi, Chris Williams in here for Steve Arterburn today. Again, I have Dr. Alice Benton, Dr. Jill Hubbard. We have Deborah on the phone. Deborah is with a foot dragger, a guy that has a hard time making decisions and drags his feet uh, when it comes to, actually, it sounds like really important things in his life. But Deborah, you were just saying that you've been with this guy for two years. Um, he, yeah. You, you want to get married. You want this relationship to take the next step. He says he's not ready, but he's already shown this pattern in his first marriage where he lived with his wife for five years. Um, pre-married before uh, they got married, and that was just based on her threatening to break up with him, I guess. Is that right? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. So, Jill, what do you think? Well, Deborah, can I can I ask you the question? Are Are you living with him? No, but he he would like for us to be, and I I said no. Good for you, Deborah. Yay. Good, because you don't want to just be a repeat of what he's already done. And so he tends to take the path of least resistance, right? And I think, you know, the five years, he just got really comfortable. And we know that overall, or generally, women are more security-minded, right? And that we tend to want the commitment um, before men do. Um, And if a man is in a relationship that's suiting him, right meaning he's living with someone there isn't always they don't always feel that need to take it any farther um so right. and it, so it sounds like um I, I you know i also wonder where his commitment is to the lord and if that's a part of your relationship um 
He is a Christian, okay. and we do go to the same church, okay. but he doesn't go every Sunday. Okay, okay. He has a martial martial arts that he's been in for many, many years, and he does that every other Sunday. Okay, religiously, huh? So, Deborah, it's sounding yeah, like yeah. his his priorities don't match up with your priorities, mm-hmm. and and I I love and celebrate that you have enough self worth and standards to call and ask this question. He he doesn't sound like he's been pursuing his own healing and character growth process, not as a main priority in his life after the the end of the previous marriage, even though he's a well, great, he he's, said he did. Okay. Well, so but, 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 but Deborah, what does his behavior say? He, he speaks some good words and he goes to church sometimes, but the, the pattern of behavior seems to say your priorities are not his priorities. Right. And I'm getting aggravated because I, I don't even get a dialogue with him on this topic. When I bring it up, I can tell he just cringes. Your aggravation is good. Mm. It is a righteous <laughs> aggravation. And it is That's a good, good yeah. sign that you're being self-protective and that you're seeing red flags, that he's not responding well enough to your concerns. So I, yeah. yes, mm-hmm. I don't want you to downplay your own agitation, but rather hear it as, as your soul wanting protection for yourself, for your future, for your romantic relationship. Right. And Well, I, should I just say maybe, look, I'm, I think I need to just maybe meet some other people and just meet some other people to see if I can find someone that's ready well, I to find know. someone that's more in line with your values, right? I think that's okay. the important piece, that it's becoming more apparent that you guys don't value the same things and that you don't have the same standards in life and that, you know, you're wanting some things that really are a, about, you know, growing closer to the Lord and having, you know, a, a pure relationship before the Lord. And he's not wanting that. He's wanting to settle for convenience, Right. Low risk. Yeah. And and Deborah, it's fine to lay those things out first in conversation with him mm-hmm. to be very clear and gentle that this is what I yeah. want in my life. And, and I want to know from you if you do or don't want it, you, you get to decide. But then if, if his reaction continues to be what you've seen and heard all along, then, then mm-hmm. that tells you that tells he, he's you. choosing. Yeah. He mm-hmm. is choosing. Even passively, okay, he's choosing. It's been this way for a year now, and I'm I'm getting... Well, I two years is long it. enough. Yeah. Two years is long enough of time to give okay. a relationship amount of time. If people don't get engaged within, you know, a year and a half to two and a half years around that mark, depending on outside circumstances, usually it doesn't happen. And it's possible, Deborah, that if and when he loses you, mm-hmm. he may then change. He may wake up to what a great right. woman he had. And, and he, he may make some changes in his life. So there's a possibility of hope. But go that self-protection route first. Right. But you compromising, right, or working harder than he is, is not going to get you what you want. And we're so your only it hope. Feels like. I'm the one giving all the Yeah, words. you are. So, you are. So again, you, Deborah, they were talking about, I love what both Jill and Alice were saying, that I want you to hear from them, especially as women, is that you have value. Your frustration is speaking to your needs and the needs that you have in a relationship, and those matter. Those matter tremendously, and you need a person who can enter into those places with you, have those conversations, even if they're tough, but also align on your values in life. And so, again, you have two years of experience. If you expect him to show up differently, that's not on him. That's on you. Mm. Right? Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. So this is what you have, and and this is – I'll leave it here, and I typically tell uh, pre-marrieds this – any pattern that you see premaritally, multiply that by five once you get married. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Or ten. Or ten. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or, or ten. So, so Deborah, we're going to send you a great resource. We're going to send you Steve Arterburn's Is This the One? That's going to help yes. you work through some of these questions that you have, help illuminate those things that you want in, in a partner and in yourself, and that, yeah, this is like – 
it just sounds like this is not the one. So we want to or not the one right now. Not, for sure. Absolutely. Not the one right now. So we want to send you on the right track with that. Debbie, thank you so much for calling in today. And uh, and hey, we wish you well and we know that God is leading you in your journey mm-hmm. towards um, a better one here yes. in the future. So uh, again, this radio program is one is an such an amazing honor to be a part of. Mm-hmm. Amen. We we don't always get to see what the impact is on the other side of it, but we do know that God is working in and through it. Mm-hmm. But we can only do this because people support us. The listeners support us. People who believe in it and who have been helped by it support it. And so we are asking, especially if if you have not been a part of Club New Life, send in Club New Life. If if you uh, sub- subscribe, I think is it? If you support us monthly through Club New Life, we're going to send you a set of four devotionals that Steve wrote, 100 Days of Character, 100 Days of Peace, 100 Days of Prayer, and the newly released 100 Days of Healing. There's a lot of 100 days in here, but I, and I find that working through in my own life devotionals or daily things that help me stay on track are absolutely invaluable. But in addition to that, the Club New Life videos have so much incredible information, and especially from the, the, the hosts here on the show and some of our therapists in network, it's all right there. And so th- we have some testimonies too. So, Alice, you got one over there? We do. This is from Jean, who's a listener, and she writes to us, Dear New Life, we are so blessed by your ministry and your daily program. When I discovered my husband on the computer looking at very inappropriate websites eight years ago, I knew just what to do. He got the help he needed through Every Man's Battle Workshop. It was just the beginning of building our marriage. Today, he can be trusted. He says what he means, where he's going, etc. Previously, every move was suspect. I can't put into words the joy that fills my heart related to your help. Your books have been awesome, as is the interaction on your programs between Dr. Stoop, Mylon, Jill, etc. I love you all. Thank you so much. And we just experienced this over and over and over again, that, that there's so many people out there, ourselves included, you know, that struggle in life when we don't know where the solution is, where the help that God is offering is coming from. And here at New Life, we are all in committed in where we can to help you connect to God's help in your life. Chris, I'm glad you included us in it because it's why I'm mm-hmm. I'm a giver too to New Life. Yeah. It yes, has changed my life. Are. It has changed my marriage. Mm-hmm. My kids have a better family because of what New Life has taught me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, the, the resources are just, again, invaluable. And uh, it's like, it's wisdom in action over and over, and it leads to better life. If you're, if you're listening out there, you want to call in. We're going to be in the studio for two hours today. Again, that is 1-800-229-3000. 1-800-229-3000. We'd love to talk with you, love to take your call. If you're waiting online, stick around with us. We're going to be back after the break. I want to mention one more thing, Intimacy and Marriage, this Friday in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, If you need help in your marriage, which I know we all do, sign up for that. Don't wait, and uh, it's going to be a fantastic weekend. Again, we will come back to some more calls right after the break. if I would consider myself a sex addict. You know, I thought it was just about admitting the things that I had done wrong. I I never had a clue that it was about redeeming our story. You know, I thought it was just about coming clean on what I had done. I had no idea how to help her with her pain. She was a mess, I was a mess, and, and we got divorced. Going to EMB, surrounding myself with these other men, they accepted me for who I was and what I had done, but they challenged me to step up and do better. You know, they'll be around other men who are not just pointing the finger, but um, willing to get in and wade through it with them, you know, get in the trenches. They'll get hope from this workshop. Take my sweet wife and my story. We were divorced, remarried, and on our way to what I think uh, will be the sweetest years of our lives. You know, it's no longer simply about surviving. For the first time ever, you know, we're thriving, we're enjoying where we're at. Hey, listen, if you're struggling, we want to see you at the workshop. Give us a call, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
Last year after every man's battle, I was so moved by the transformation that I saw, not only in myself, but in the guys in our small group and the other people that were there and the stories that I heard that I decided to go ahead and join Club New Life as a contributor to that. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. As we're doing God's work here, you're restoring marriages, you're giving people hope. It's just been such a blessing to me, and I just wanted to encourage you all. When you see something good that God's doing, just jump on that and help support that. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433. Give your support to them if you can, and, and just help them do what God's doing here in the, in the world. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. And we're back. Chris Williams again in the studio for Steve Arterburn, Dr. Jill Hubbard, Dr. Alice Benton. And we're actually just having a great time today. We are. I love hanging out with you guys. It is so much fun. So, hey, let's get another call in. Let's go to Tony in Bakersfield, California, listening on the podcast. Tony, are you there? I am here. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, man. How can we help you? Well, a question. I called a little bit over a year ago, spoke with Dr. Jill Hubbard. Um, Dr. David Stoop and Steve Arterburn that day. Uh -huh. My wife had had an affair. Um, fast forward uh, about six months later, um, had some verbal abuse um, on behalf of her and her, her adult son and physical threats on her adult son. Fast forward a few months later to now, um, so now she thinks I'm having an affair. Uh, where I'm at today in comparison to a year ago when she had affairs, I'm a completely different person. Um, I'm in a codependency class reading a very good codependency book, so I've learned how to set some firm boundaries, um, which have changed the dynamics at home. Mm -hmm. However, I noticed that she's kind of going back to how she was before, so much so that just this past week she uh, accused me of having an affair. Is she and having an affair? So, uh, no, she's not, because I can tell by the, uh, the her habits, what she's doing, she's just disconnected again. If that mm. makes sense, she's uh, yeah. she's up and down, up and down, up and down. Sometimes she's at church, she wants to serve. Sometimes she's not at church, she doesn't want to serve. Um, you know, uh, me, I'm I'm to the point where I'm not going to be a dad no more and and babysit. And uh, you mean I her? I want to make babysit sure that I'm her? on the right track. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to make sure that I'm on the right track, taking the right steps. Uh, I will do, I will say that last week I did take a verbal jab at her, but like within ten minutes of of the jab, I text her and I apologize for the verbal jab I took oh, her. Oh, good. But, mm -hmm. um, but it was due to the fact that um, she made a comment about me, which is no excuse. She made a comment about me. There's a girl at, at, at the office that called called, called me. Um, she thought my name was El Chapo, like the drug lord guy. Mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. and I said, no, that's not my name. So um, I told my wife about it because it's kind of funny. And so she took it as a threat as far as this girl trying to hit on me. And there's nothing like that. And yeah. she found a text on my phone on the screen of her, 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 of her car, because I guess it holds history. Yeah. And it was something about m m hooking up or meeting somebody in between school hours, which I know nothing about. But so, so Tony, it, it just Tony, even make sense. Tony, what, ha mm -hmm. what have been your best steps in reacting to her accusation of you having an affair? What are the best things you've done to handle that? Um, I I think I've been calm for the most part, like I've been in the past, and I've detached when there's physical uh, verbal attacks. Because mm -hmm. before it would be like she would escalate, and I would escalate. She would escalate, and I would escalate. Yeah. And one thing I learned is just to just to disconnect, mm -hmm. and it's actually caused her to step back and say, "Whoa, he's not playing no more." Yeah, and um, mm -hmm. that's I've good. Actually, I've left. Yeah, I actually, there was a weekend where we were going with our church family uh, camping. Well, Tony, let me, let me jump in really quickly. Let me jump in really quickly. Sure. What, sure. How can we help you? What's the question for us? Well, I just want to make sure that I'm taking the right, if I'm, if I'm doing the right thing still. Um, 
I just want to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Like I said, I did take that verbal jab last week, but I apologize immediately. Um, Tony, do you, do you continue to want reconciliation? Tony, do you continue to want reconciliation yeah, in your marriage? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to. I'm not looking for a divorce at all. So, Tony, I'm Tony, then gonna I'm going to I'm going to ask you some questions. Your wife, mm-hmm. it may be that she's afraid and she's acting out of her fear. And as as Chris asked mm-hmm. about, is she having an affair? We we, we humans tend to project the fear mm-hmm. of actually what we're doing onto other people. So so there are those two possibilities. So if she's reacting mm-hmm. just out of fear and she's not and she's not having an affair, being a good listener to her heart and drawing out that fear before being defensive mm-hmm. is going to be very important to connect with her. So you might ask her, I-, I know you're worried about this woman at my work. Would you tell me about it? Tell me tell me what's causing the fear. Tell me about those thoughts going on in your head. And I'm going to just listen. And giving her that space to speak out the fear is one of the first steps in healing. And then after having heard her for some time, being willing to offer her proof. Would you like to look through my phone with me? Would you like to would you like me to have a conversation with this coworker of mine in front of you so that you can see what I'm doing so that you can ask questions so you can I, so that I can show you proof of my of my honesty here. Well, here's the thing. I hide nothing. I my phone is open 24/7. Tony, I, I'm so here I'm, so I'm hearing so your defense it. right away even to us here. So if you're, if you're, no, no, if it's, it's, I, I, I have done that in the past, but my wife attacks. Okay. Okay. She literally attacks. And I, 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 I my phone, she, I'm in the shower and I get out and. Okay. So and Tony. I my phone, she can look at it and there's like five apps open because she's checking to see if I'm having an affair. Okay. So. It's so ridiculous. Yes. Okay. But instead of you know, reacting <clears throat> as you are in being upset at her behavior, you have to see, okay, something is going on with her, right? And if she, yeah, yeah, no, if, not, if she could cheat, just, then she's assuming mm-hmm. you could too, right? So yeah, I think I what Alice yep. is telling you is something that to disarm the situation with her and say, you know, sweetheart, I don't have anything to hide. And I'm not doing those things, but if you're thinking I am, I can only imagine the the stress and anxiety you're feeling. And I really want to come alongside you and be a support in this so that we can work together. Because my goal is that we both have everything out in the open, right? You're, you're trying to support her in her fears. Let's say it wasn't about you. Let's say she had fears about something else. You would come alongside her. And so you have to treat this as, okay, this is this is not true in your world, but in her mind, it's very alive, and it means something. And so to support her in exploring it, as Alice is describing, gosh, you get to be the hero here in this, because you're not being I defensive. Understand. You're not you're protecting your reputation. Okay, go ahead. No, I understand, but I'm scared to put my guard down, because there's been so much abuse that if I put my... I understand, I've yeah. gotten to the point where I protect myself now. Because I've, she she's unsafe. Her okay. Uh, older adult son's unsafe, and her parents safe. So now I just protect myself. Hmm. Um, so, so so and so I don't wh- allow certain things in. Okay. So what have you guys done as a couple to go get help together so that you have a mediator to help you so that you both can feel safe? Well, as far as a couple, we were doing. Um, Marriage counseling, we stopped because we didn't have enough of funds. Um, you know, we I have a men's Bible group. I have my codependency class. Yeah, I hear she you're doing a too. lot of good she things. Chooses. Go ahead. She sorry. doesn't want to do anything. I can't force her. I can't be a parent no more. Okay, so so Tony, you're in a, you're you are in a really tough situation, mm-hmm. man. And I hear that. And yeah. and when things are unsafe, you're doing a good job of setting boundaries. Um, the, the marriage does sound like it's in and has been in a major crisis, and it doesn't sound like she's done a whole lot of her own proactive no. repair yeah. in the wake of her affair. Here's what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. I know funds are limited, and I know that it, this can be difficult, but uh, I'm going to see if we can do some scholarshiping or something, but the Intimacy in Marriage Workshop can really expose a lot of this. Also, we're going to send you a copy of How We Love um, by Mylan and Kay Yurkovich, and I go through that. But I want to. I have that book. Perfect. Oh, okay. okay, then we're going to we're going to send you Take Your Life Back. 
Um, but here's the thing. I am, we're, we're just about out of time here for this show. But you need to take care of you and keep setting the boundaries. All of your focus is on her behavior. Her behavior is dangerous. Go back to what keeps you safe. You're the value here. And so keep in that and set strong boundaries with her. Look for help. And thank you for calling in. We'll Thanks be for listening. with you. We hope this show. program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you. But you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live.